So here's my first sketchbook. It's a little uh, crappy one you get from the store. I think I got it online, but you could get it from the store. I think it's a Strathmore. I think it says in the back. Strathmore 400 series watercolor paper. So there it is. Let's get into it. All right, so here's my uh, first little sketchbook here. And I, I wanted to point out for most people, because uh, I've seen online this type of sketchbook, the way that it's the binding is, it's in spreads. So the back side of the page has this kind of weird texture to it and it's very smooth. And then the, in the side of the spreads, it's more like watercolor paper textured. And then you turn the next page and it's two smooth surfaces. So I figured out that, okay, you use it in spreads. So that's how it's gonna be in this video. So here is my first uh, one that I did after years and years of, of not using watercolor. This was my first one. I did it from life. This is my neighbor's plan outside my apartment. I decided to go out there one day. April 22nd, so I knew I was going on a trip to Alaska in early May, May 12th, 2018. So I was like, okay, I wanna start doing some watercolors, start figuring this stuff out. And this one came out pretty well. So I was like, okay, I think I can do this. And I did this one from life. I had some carnations in my apartment. This one's May 11th. So one day before, I had a lot of planning in between the 22nd of April and May 11th, so. Um, one thing I do like about this one is just the effect of the flowers, getting the lights, the mediums, and then the dark values. And uh, I, I learned a lot from doing that um, compared to this one. So all, right away in my second one, I was learning. I felt really good about that, uh, even though the rest of it's kind of blah. And this one was done from life. I don't know if I pointed that out. These were done from life as well. And uh, I figured, Let's do something simple. I got to figure out the basics. So I did an apple. Came out okay. I uh, used a little bit of gouache here for white. Um, kind of give some reflection looking thing. Both May 11th. This one's a monochrome. So when this one kind of, I wasn't as happy as I wanted to be with this one, I was like, I'm going back to monochrome. So I did it with black and white so that I could focus on brushwork and how to figure out how to apply the watercolor and I think it came out pretty well. I mean, obviously there's some issues here and over here as well, but learned a lot. Felt like I was getting it down pretty quickly. And this was the last one on May 11th that I did from life. And I was happy with this one, the way that I simplified it. I felt good about the way that I really simplified the light and shadow shapes and, uh, you know, starting to simplify things. So this is after. So these were all before my Alaska trip and now these are all after my Alaska trip. And this is from a photograph uh, from my Alaska trip and I did a whole um, six or seven sketches while in Alaska. You guys can check out that if you haven't seen it. I did a, uh, filled up some pages in a sketchbook from life, plain air while I was in Alaska. And then these are afterwards. So this is May 25th. And I was happy with some of this. Uh, obviously, it's it's pretty rough. It's very simplified. But, you know, I was happy with some of the wet into wet blending and, you know, I was starting to figure out things a little bit more. Always trying to learn. And these next uh, two, maybe four, are all on the same day, May 28th. So this one's very rough. I was starting to get too detailed with it, um, going too dark too detailed, it's kind of this textured brush stroke. And uh, I just, I wasn't happy with this effect. So I started, I did this one and I was, I was focusing more on having, uh, let the brush strokes do the work and let the, val let the values do the work, keep the brush strokes very blocky and uh, just let the value create the image, the illusion of texture and, and value and stuff. So that was my, that's what I was trying to do. And this one was very challenging because it was a snowy day, very hazy. I probably could have gone a little bit darker down here and it would have pushed the other mountains back further, but I'm still happy with how this came out. Very cool. This one I was, I had to end uh, on this one because it was, I was very happy this night when I did this one to my last one. I was like, wow, 
I'm really starting to understand it now. It's more of simplifying everything, simplifying these large shadow shapes and light shapes and getting the values to work. Because I can see here the, the blue sky is just a little too dark. Um, I mean, I think it works, but this one's much lighter and you get that that feeling of it being the sky. You can You can almost see how crisp the air is, how clean it is and that sunlight just coming down on these mountains. I mean, it really just works, um, in my opinion, and that's why that was one of my favorites. May 31st, Kenai Lake, Seward Highway. Very beautiful lake, this turquoise blue. I believe it used to be a, might have been a glacier, I can't remember, but it, it was a beautiful place. A very moody atmosphere that day, and, uh, yeah, it came out really beautiful, and this is really one of my favorites here. Summit Lake along the Seward Highway. Really, the Seward Highway is such a beautiful area. If you ever have the chance to drive up there in Alaska, go to Seward, drive the Seward Highway. It's just, un it's unreal. This is what you see for like two hours, hour and a half, two hours. Just unbelievable mountains at every turn. You pass by numerous lakes like this. It's just beautiful, it's spectacular. Lovely color harmonies. And uh, when I did this one, I started feeling really confident about watercolor and my abilities. And uh, it just made me feel good to see where I came from, you know, early May, late April to this early June, June 9th. And I was like, wow, I'm really starting to understand this, how this stuff works. And uh, I was just really happy with that. And I'm doing all these kind of Alaska paintings for studies, for oil paintings that I want to do. So this is uh, when we were in Denali Park, the last day we were there, or the last, uh, not the last day, This we were there in the evening. So this is all in sunlight, evening uh, sunlight, and then this is in shadow. This is the Savage River, covered in ice, but busting open a little bit here so you can see that. And then this is uh, mountains on the way to Denali when we first got to Alaska driving up to Denali. And believe it or not, I mean, being there in person, I mean, it's the scene was almost so monochromatic. It was so amazing the amount of distance, the, the, the atmosphere, the color of the mountains. It was just unlike anything I've seen before. And um, this is actually the first painting I'm doing currently right now in oils for my Alaska uh, series of paintings and this is June 16th and June 13th June 18th had a lot of trouble with this one so notice notice what happened here so I did really well June 9th June 13th June 16th pretty well these came out really great I think those are um, pretty strong little sketches and then I do this one so I kind of went two steps forward one step back uh, at least what I felt. So some of this I liked. I liked the splatter effects. I was starting to play around with splattering and playing around with things, having fun. Very loose in the trees here, so I like the looseness of it, but I don't like this top half. I don't like color of the mountain. I did the values too dark. It's not simplified enough. The color's wrong. Um, the sky is too dark. You know, if we go back to the beginning, here, you know, we compare the sky colors. I mean, it's this one gives the effect of, of light and this one does not give the effect of light and that's what it's missing. So I took that knowledge and I started moving forward. So June 19th, the next day, I, I did a different one. I did a cloudy one with some water, trying to play around with water effects, still incorporating some splatters, having fun. Really beautiful wet into wet color mixtures here, magenta, Ultramarine, Thalo Blue, Viridian, playing around, having fun, a lot of fun. And even having even more fun here. Both of these are June 23rd. Warm gray sky here in the evening, but look at the colors I did here. I have a yellow, a blue, and a red. I mean, just, it really looks beautiful. And then a lot of colors in here, a little Viridian, Magenta, Thalo Blue, more Viridian. I mean, just playing around, having fun. Same thing over here, some blue, viridian, magenta. 
um, reds and blues, yellow ochre in the foreground, some dry brushing effects, starting to play around with that, more splattering with dark paint. A lot of fun, trying to keep it loose and, and experiment, playing around with color. And these are a little more grayer than the paintings before that we just saw. So really experimenting, but this gray really helps this color pop here in the distance. Purple is magenta is viridian. Uh, notice a trend here with these Alaska paintings, a lot of magentas, blues, purples, viridians, yellow ochres, a lot of brown in here. Another one along the Seward Highway. This is June 24th, June 25th. So I did a lot of these, um, you know, one per day, trying to keep up the habit of doing some kind of painting. It's so easy to bust out the sketchbook on the table and just start watercoloring. Um, just made it very easy. Portage Lake, very, very cold, glac glacial lake, very cold. People have died in it from swimming in it, and uh, I did not get in it. It was very, very cold. Esther Passage, playing around with more dry brushing. Um, really struggled a lot with the darkness of everything. I think I went a little too dark here. Um, I mean, it works as a painting overall, but I think it just, the opaqueness here kind of killed the watercolor effect in my view, in my opinion, but still a very strong painting, a lot of depth back here. Values are pretty good. June 28th, this next one is July 6th. So it looks like it took over a week off. Had a lot to do for my work, my day job, had a lot of work to do. And I, uh, you know, kind of just, didn't have time for watercoloring. Um, but this one came out really great. I have a tutorial on this one, so you guys can check that out. Uh, I'll link it in the video now. But playing around again with the magentas, the purples, the viridians, the yellow ochres. Really beautiful. And this one is actually the same as... Uh, where is it? Same as this one here, we can see there. Actually, we can do them split screen. So, you know, slightly a different view. This one's more zoomed out um, during the day. This one's in the evening. Backlit, all in reflected light, and this one's in direct sunlight. So same mountains, but completely different feeling. Dif different feeling, different color harmonies, different time of day. Slightly different shapes here going on, but, you know, same idea. You know, big sloping lines down, crossing. Just having a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And these are the last two. Struggled with this one, but I would think I was able to set, like save it. I think I was able to save it. Um, this is actually a sunset scene. And I think I made the oranges here a little too dark. I kept the sky light. I knew I wanted to do that. But I think I made the mountain in the sunset light just a little too dark maybe. Um, I think if I would have lightened that up just a bit, it would have made the shadows have a little more weight to them. But overall, I like the color harmony and uh, the scene, you know, composition's pretty nice. A lot of lovely wet in the wet down here, blues and purples and stuff. Uh, and this one's Esther Passage. So I did all these on the same day, June, uh, July 6th, excuse me. And uh, this one was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Cool little island uh, in the ocean, right off the coast here. There's a lot of little islands around. There's just little rocks popping up and just trees sprouting. Really cool, very, very cool to capture and to see that in real life. I remember seeing that on a cruise that we went on and uh, just a beautiful area. So most of the sketchbook is by, from my Alaska, Alaska trip, excuse me. And that's what I'm working on. I'm working on creating oil paintings from these sketches. And I find these sketches very helpful. And I look forward to uh, filling up another sketchbook. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed a look through my first watercolor sketchbook. I mean, I learned a lot. And I think uh, that's why it's important to keep these little sketchbooks, whether you're drawing, painting, watercolor, whatever you're interested in. Keep a little sketchbook. Do it every day if you can. And you're gonna, you're gonna get better. You're gonna figure out what you did wrong, why doesn't it look good, 
and you're going to apply that knowledge or you should apply that knowledge to your, your future work, your next work. And just try to remember that stuff. And if you can't remember it, write it down. Just write it down every day. You know, what you did wrong and how, you, how to improve that. You know, something doesn't look real. How can I improve that? Or, you know, I, I messed up this type of effect. What could I do better next time? Apply that to your next work. You'll see an improvement. And uh, just in a little over a few months, I'm really happy with this. And I'm looking forward to uh, keeping another one, doing another sketchbook and keeping that and uh, having some fun with it, trying some new subjects. This one's mostly Alaska stuff, but I'm looking forward to a bunch of new things to paint. So anyway, comment down below. Let me know what you think. I'd appreciate it. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Keep on painting and drawing. Don't get discouraged. Take care of yourself. Peace.